Welcome to another episode of 9 to 5 Mac Weekly, where I had to cancel and reorder my iMac order three different times because I couldn't decide on a configuration. I am your host, Smile Somerville, and let's dive into the news and talk about these brand new 27 inch 5K iMacs. So, the new 5K iMacs are finally here. There have been plenty of rumors over the past couple of weeks suggesting that there would be new iMacs on the way, and now it's finally confirmed. And while there isn't a redesign, which a lot of people, or at least some people, are upset about, there are quite honestly a lot of changes when you're looking at it uh, as a grand total. So let's dive right in and talk about everything that's new. So the first major update here is definitely going to be the CPUs. Uh, this is kind of expected. We expected 10th gen CPUs to make it onto these new iMacs, and they're finally here. As far as what we're rocking with specifically, we've got two versions of the six core i5, 10th generation processor. We've got a 3.8 gigahertz core i7 processor. And then the interesting one, the really interesting one is the 10th core i9 processor. And in addition to the i7, both of these are gonna turbo boost up to five gigahertz. So these are supposed to be pretty fast CPUs we're dealing with right here. And in addition to getting those new CPUs, we've also got the T2 chip included in the new IMAX, which is nice to see. When looking at all these CPU options here, it really does look like Apple went all out uh, as far as performance for these new IMAX. And while we don't have any numbers yet as far as how these iMacs are going to perform, Jeff and I have both got our orders, and I'll get into what I ordered specifically later on in the video, but Jeff and I both ordered our iMacs and they'll be on the way within the next week or so. But one thing I'm really curious about here is how this 10 core i9 CPU is going to perform. And given that they also updated the 5K iMac Pro, uh, they eliminated the 8 core Xeon option and updated it with a new 10 core Xeon option, I really wonder how those two are going to perform. Is the iMac 5 5K standard model going to do better than the Xeon or is it going to be so close to the point where you can't really justify spending the extra couple of thousand dollars on the iMac Pro? That's definitely something we're going to get into when getting that 10 core model in the building. But overall, the options here as far as CPU look great and I feel like if you go with any one, you're going to have a solid desktop computer as far as performance, something that's going to last you at least six to seven years, honestly. Now the next big update and something that we've never seen on an iMac and specifically the 5K iMac before is a display display finish option. Uh, we've got this on the Pro Display XDR. You can choose between the standard display, which is just a glossy finish, then the nano texture matte finish version. We're now getting that same option here for the 5K iMac, which is quite interesting and something, like I said, we've never seen on an iMac before. Now, this is kind of confusing. I'm not really sure why Apple did this to begin with, at least for this product specifically. It would make much more sense if they had done this with the iMac Pro when that was initially launched, or maybe updated it a year or two ago with the nano texture finished version. That would have been cool to see, but basically completely ignoring that for the iMac Pro and throwing it on the new standard iMac, which, you know, less pros or less professionals are gonna use. Um, are gonna go after, so it's kind of confusing because at least in my experience, um, a lot more people want glossy displays because they're much more rare. Pretty much Apple uh, is the only manufacturer that consistently puts out glossy displays on all of their devices. Matte is obviously better for uncontrollable lighting scenarios, so for professionals who are using this uh, in very extreme or harsh lighting environments or just need to have a matte finish, this is a great option to have. I'm just not sure why Apple did this as if, you know, they're gonna sell a ton of them. I don't really think many people are gonna go for this. And this is something I'm kinda gonna get into a bit later, the general theme of this iMac update, adding a lot of stuff that I don't think a lot of people are really asking for, especially for a machine that isn't as popular as some of their others. It just kind of seems weird to me, especially to pay $500 for this option as opposed to maybe two or $300. I understand it's probably a pretty expensive process and pretty expensive for Apple to do. And the $500 price is probably justified if you're going through all the technicalities and all the expensive processors they're using to manufacture this display. But me personally, I'm not gonna pay 500 extra dollars to kind of lose the exclusivity you get of getting a glossy display play with that iMac because like I said, on pretty much 99% of monitors, you don't have that option to get a glossy display, especially on monitors with higher resolutions. But what do you think about the glossy display? Let us know down in the comment section down below. And since we're going over all of these specs anyway, I figured I would just bring up memory. So you can spec up the 27 inch iMac with up to 128 gigs of RAM. That's a lot. But Apple is going to charge you $2,300 for it. So I don't know if this needs to be said. I don't know if someone needs to hear this. I would hope not. But please do not pay a dime for Apple memory 
buy it third party. I'll have some links down in the description you can use. You can save a ton of money upgrading the memory yourself. For example, like I said, you can have up to 128 gigabytes of memory in here. Uh, you can purchase two sets of 32 gigs, or, or sorry, two sets of 64 gigs for 300 bucks each at $600 total. That's essentially 75% cheaper than if you were to purchase your RAM through Apple. You're saving maybe about 20 minutes or 15 minutes if you've never installed memory in an iMac before, but trust me, it is worth it. Do not buy your memory from Apple. Don't do that. But I did want to throw this in there. I kind of appreciate the fact that Apple didn't upgrade the memory standard for the iMacs. They didn't update it to a 3700 uh, megahertz RAM. They kept it at 2666 megahertz memory. And that's perfect for me because that's exactly what's in the Mac mini as far as RAM. So I can take that RAM out, swap it in the iMac and I don't have to pay anything for new RAM. So that's, that's good. This new iMac 5K is also finally adding in a 1080p webcam, uh, the same 1080p of webcam that's found on the iMac Pro. So yes, you're getting a few more pixels and a lot of people are happy about it. A lot of people are acting like that's a huge feature. I personally don't really care about it, mostly because I've mostly used dedicated webcams or separate webcams anyway. So if anything, I'm just happy about the fact that I'll have an integrated webcam finally because that's something I've never had before. But yeah, when looking at it, it probably won't be something I even notice or I probably will barely be able to distinguish a difference between the 720p and the 1080p webcam on the iMacs. It's, it's not that big a deal to me, but good job for Apple for finally including it. I think they should have done this years ago. I am really happy to see that Apple updated the new GPUs and the new 5K iMacs, and it's kind of interesting to see how many options they included. So they have four different GPU options, even though they only have three standard specs. You have the $1,800 spec, the $2,000 spec, uh, and then the i7 the model after that. So the fact that they have four different GPU options, I think that's kind of overkill, although I'm not complaining. I don't really understand why. So as far as what GPUs we have specifically, firstly, with the first two models, the $1,800 and $2,000 5K iMac models, we've got the Radeon Pro 5300 with four gigabytes of GDDR6 video memory, which should be pretty decent for standard video editing, some light 4K video editing. And then if you upgrade to the 2300 model, you firstly get the 5500 XT to start with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And then from there, you have the option to upgrade to the 57 700 with eight gigabytes of video RAM, and then you can upgrade to the 5700 XT with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. That is a lot of video RAM. And like I said, I wonder why Apple decided to go that crazy with GPU options uh, for this iMac, given that they have an iMac Pro model they could have done that for. Now, I understand they're not using the high bandwidth uh, HBM2 memory that they use. Uh, on the iMac Pro and on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So I guess there's probably gonna be a bit of a difference as far as performance there. But either way, these seem like they're gonna be pretty beefy GPUs. Uh, and I can't wait to see what they're looking like as far as performance. It'd be really interesting to see what a 5700 XT connected through an eGPU to a Mac Mini is gonna be like compared to a 5700 connected to the iMac 5K. Might, might have a video on that coming in the near future. But overall, I think the fact that Apple added four different GPU options for this 5K iMac is pretty exciting and I can't wait to see what all of them are looking like as far as performance. The new 5K iMac is also gonna be getting an upgraded speaker and microphone system so it's essentially getting the same audio hardware upgrade treatment as seen on the 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2019, which I mean, I think that's great. Although the iMac already had great speakers uh, and a good enough microphone, it's great to see them be improved even further. I know one of the first things that impressed me about the iMac when first like seeing one for the first time, at least the 2012 current design model uh, was how good the speakers was. Uh, I think that was a really good feature. Although I don't use built-in desktop speakers ever, I think if you don't have desktop speakers, the iMacs are definitely good enough for most people. If this video gets 3000 likes, I will record an album entirely on the microphone on the iMac 5K. 3000 likes, that's all it takes. Another small addition to the 5K iMac is the option to add 10 gigabit ethernet for $100, just like on the Mac mini. And while I can't say there have been a bunch of people crying uh, to get 10 gigabit ethernet on the standard 5K iMac, it is good to see it here. And if you're someone who really wanted that, you know, there you go. It's just 
like I said, another one of those things, I don't get why they added to the 5K iMac when they have the 5K iMac Pro. It really makes me take into consideration what they have in store for the 5K iMac Pro. Are they gonna discontinue that machine? Is this, was it only meant to be a one and done? I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Because while yes, there are still considerable differences as far as specs between the 5K iMac Pro uh, and the standard 5K iMac, if you spec out one of these standard 5K iMacs, you're gonna get really, really close. And in fact, you can even get a higher storage model uh, on the standard 5K iMac compared to the 5K iMac Pro. You can get up to eight terabytes on the 5K iMac while you can only get up to four terabytes on the iMac Pro. The Fusion Drive is finally dead. The 4K and 5K iMac are now gonna come standard with SSDs across the board. You cannot get a Fusion Drive on the iMacs any longer, which is excellent. You can get from a 256 drive all the way up to an eight terabyte drive if you go with one of the higher end models. And yes, this is excellent to see. Although this eight terabyte drive, if you wanted it, is gonna cost you a considerable amount of change. I believe we're looking at $2,400 here for eight terabytes of storage. Uh, I think it's kind of worth it because firstly, it's gonna be kind of hard to come across something that is gonna be just as small or something small enough to fit inside a machine for the same price. Secondly, if you want to upgrade that storage yourself, it's gonna be extremely difficult, at least kind of difficult as it requires taking off the display of the 5K iMac, which is definitely not something I would personally want to get into. But if you're brave enough, you could probably save a little money. Overall, I'm just super excited to see that Fusion drives are finally gone and we now have SSDs as a standard and high speed SSDs as that as a standard in the iMacs. So is this the last Intel based iMac? Well, I feel as though um, there are many signs that indicate that there's a 24 inch redesign in ARM based iMac coming at us later this year. Uh, and given that, I feel as though this probably is the last Intel based iMac, which would make a lot of sense for multiple reasons. The first reason being, you can clearly see that Apple went all out as far as the options and the customization and power. You can get up to a 10 core CPU, 120 gigs of RAM. They've added things that they haven't added to the iMac ever before, like the nano textured glass. So I feel as though Apple's trying to give us, although you know we're not getting a redesign, Apple is clearly trying to give us something here that will last us a long time that will kind of hold us tight until they finally have an ARM-based version of the 27-inch iMac or a larger screen version, assuming with the redesign, uh, that can compete with the likes of the current 27-inch iMac that was just announced today. So for those of you who are looking for an iMac or an iMac upgrade with this amount of power um, and a redesign, I feel as though you're gonna be waiting a little while longer. I think this new redesign iMac is coming soon, um, but I think we're only gonna get it in a limited capacity, meaning we're gonna only get it in that 24-inch uh, lower performing, smaller form fat machine. I said form fat, I meant format. So now that we have all the specs and all that out of the way, let's take a look at the model I ordered specifically and the model iMac that I'm gonna be reviewing for you guys here on the channel. So firstly, as far as CPU, I decided to just go all out. I went with the 10 core i9 processor, purely just because I'm really interested to see how it's gonna perform. I wanna see if this iMac spec I'm going with here is gonna perform kinda like a, a baby iMac Pro. Well. We'll see, I wanna see how this 10 core CPU is gonna perform. Does mean I'm gonna to have to wait a little more while, but uh, I think it'll be worth it. So as far as RAM, like I said, I went with eight gigabytes because Apple charges a ridiculous premium for RAM. And if anything, I can just take the RAM out of my Mac mini and throw it in the iMac, or I could spend $160, which is cheaper than the $130 upgrade to get 16 gigs and get 32 gigs for the iMac. I could go either way and still save money as opposed to giving Apple a dime for memory upgrades. I did go with the standard glass option just because like I said, I want a glossy display. I feel like I, I always have matte displays and I, I want a glossy display. As far as storage, I'm going with the 500 gig model just because I feel like I have enough external storage and it's a bit more than what I have now. So I feel like 500 is gonna feel like an upgrade to me, a true upgrade, at least coming from 256 in my Mac mini. As far as graphics, I decided to just go with the 5500 XT just because I don't really think my workflow is gonna be able to max out or fully take advantage of the power that's capable uh, of like a 16 gigabyte video RAM video card. I don't think I need to go that crazy. I think the 5500 XT is gonna be just fine for me and if not, I'll report back. But yeah, that's basically my spec. I didn't add the 10 gigabit ethernet because I definitely did not need that. Uh, but yeah, I think this is gonna be quite the performer, especially compared to the Mac Mini I'm working with right now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this 5K iMac 
We'll see. If the performance is that much better, then maybe. But let us know in the comment section down below. Are you gonna be picking up the new Mac Mini? What are your thoughts on it? Are you upset they didn't redesign? Are you gonna wait for the redesign? Are you just gonna get one of these? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this, because obviously we're gonna have iMac content coming very, very soon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.